Good morning. Good morning to all of you, either here in the sanctuary or on Zoom. You know, we're, we're just glad to be with you today for another day of reflection and introspection. I'm Dave Bianchi, your worship associate for today, and I'm really looking forward to this service. Now, if you're new to us, know that we're a welcoming community and that we care deeply for all people, regardless of racial identity, age, economic circumstances, immigration status, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Our mission is to grow together in love, faith, justice, and joy. Now, note that there will no, be no offertory today, so those of us at the fellowship can simply leave our contribution or pledge in whatever amount you feel called to do in the container provided right after the service. Now, both those on Zoom and those of us here can also text 73256, put UUFNN in the message box and hit send. Of course, you can also mail a check to our office right here at 780 Del Monte Lane, Reno 89511. Now, each month, we share our offerings with a great nonprofit that shares our values. And this month, we're honoring WAX, Women and Children's Center of the Sierra. You know, our fellowships had a long, long partnership with them. And we've observed and participated in helping to improve the lives of children and women in our community. They support women as they work their way out of poverty. So thank you for your generosity. And for those of us here at the fellowship, please follow all the protocols as outlined by our board, including proper spacing, no hugging or handshaking, maybe an elbow bump, and wear your mask. So hopefully you all know the drill by now. And those of you on Zoom will remain muted during the service, but you can put comments in the chat box. And you can also stay on following the service for a coffee time and, and a holiday party, and there's more details to, on that to, to, uh, in following the service. And today, our opening is going to a little, be a little bit different uh, this morning, so those at home are invited to have your chalice nearby and then light yours when ours is being lit, and you'll, that will be apparent to you. So no matter where you are today, sit back and enjoy, and thank you for being with us. The pandemic has laid bare and widened economic disparity locally and globally. In this Advent season, we might take the opportunity to ponder how can our community, our congregation, become a house where the holy will be born anew, offering respite sustenance and care, opening the doors ever wider to those seeking shelter from the onslaught of life. As we ponder our calling to care for our neighbors and make room at the inn, the lonely and frightened spaces within us are filled with the light of hope with the light of peace, the light of joy, and the light of love. Time of preparation for 
the work of co-creation, for the birthing of a world that heals the one in pain. Hope is born in us truth that we are blessed in this time of preparation for the work of co-creation for the birthing of a world of gentleness and is born in us each day. Today we offer the light of hope to illumine the door of welcome. May this light shine in our hearts, in our lives, and in our church. May hope awaken us to possibilities and lead us to a greater hospitality. There is room in this inn, a house for the holy. Today we also offer the light of peace to illumine the door of welcome. May this light shine in our hearts in our lives, and in our church. May peace awaken us to possibilities and lead us to greater hospitality. There is room in this inn, a house for the holy. Pressures are always there, oh love, to be more, have more, do more. Every corner of our lives needs to be filled with something. Every step, every word, every thought must be pregnant with meaning and purpose. We need to prevail, triumph, win the race, except no one ever wins, not really. We run as fast as we can to stand still, and so many get left behind, broken, poor, depleted. Perhaps in this Advent waiting time, we can learn to let go, slow down, open up. Perhaps we can begin to clear away some of the clutter and open up a space within us for silence, for stillness 
for hope for the holy and maybe just maybe as we create this open space we will find more room in our lives for generosity for laughter for connection for caring for love for life for us at Sometimes you make plans and you make plans and you still get blown away because you have such wonderful people to work with. I just have to take a moment and say that um, I'm just so overjoyed to be back in the space together for our Advent and Christmas services. Whether we're on Zoom or whether we're together, there's just something magic that happens when we come together in community. I'm so grateful to be in this space with you this year. This Sunday begins our observance of the Advent season. The traditional stories, and I think especially the Christmas ones, are not necessarily to be believed in, maybe for some of us they are, 
but rather to be turned on their heads to see what metaphors and what insights and what surprising pearls we might find there. To nourish our particular Unitarian Universalist search for meaning and truth. Of course, we have huge struggles with what Christianity has become in our world. And yet, for many of us, these stories live in us from our faith formation, from our childhoods. And so it's important that we bring forth stories from many traditions to see what we might find that is useful and enlightening. And so as the traditional Christmas story goes, Mary and Joseph have been traveling, leaving their hometown to go and register because a census has been declared. And while they're en route, they need to stop because Mary is about to deliver. So they come to this inn and they knock on the door and it's late and they ask for a room and they're told what? There is no room at the inn. And what is really interesting about that is that the recorded gospels do not actually factually mention an innkeeper in the recorded story of Jesus' birth. But this popular notion has become alive in our imaginations and perhaps in the way many of us remember the story. And actually, I think maybe the innkeeper gets a bad rap for providing substandard accommodations for a family about to go through the birthing process. But what if we saw the innkeeper as someone who, with a full house, literally thought outside the box to solve a problem? What if he, and we, we assume it was a he, maybe it wasn't. Maybe he scrambled and he thought about displacing folks who had already arrived and how can you do that as an innkeeper? And maybe he gave the very best he had to offer. I remember as a kid in those Christmas plays, this mean person saying, there's no room, I have no room at the end. Maybe he was just doing the best he could. Maybe he was even doing better than the best he could. You might remember that from a sermon earlier this fall, or most people do you think doing the best they can most of the time with the tools they have? We had a lot of conversations about that. Maybe he was doing just that. And so kind of begs the question, bringing it into today, who might we be demonizing in that kind of way? Who doesn't deserve to be demonized? Who are we blaming? A colleague shared recently a funny but not funny experience. Her seminary, in an effort to get ahead of postal delays, sent out Christmas cards to alums in October. She says you wouldn't believe the reactions received from people upset, upset of all things, that they received a Christmas card too early. Can you believe that, she says? We know an awful lot of people and an awful lot of businesses and organizations working so hard, giving so much time and energy and effort, and likewise, sometimes finding that no good deed goes unpunished. It's important for us to remember that Nothing is perfect or ideal right now. It hasn't been for some time. It's just the season of the world and the way of doing things, the way our lives are at the moment. No one 
has enough staff or time or bandwidth to do everything that's being demanded of them. Not doctors or teachers or restaurant staff, church staff, volunteers, no one. And so we might consider that the longer that we expect things to happen the way that they used to, the longer we're going to be living with disappointment. This is still all part of my colleague's Christmas card story. But she goes on to say, and I think she's right, that the sooner we accept the new way of things, the sooner we will adapt and shift our expectations and be ready to live into new ways of being, new patterns of relating, new structures for our work together to emerge. A new birthing, a new day, a new way. Held within these challenges are opportunities. How can we accept the early Christmas cards of our lives with laughter and knowing appreciation instead of annoyance and criticism? I know I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. Reactions over things that in the big picture aren't really that important. How can we extend to others the grace and compassion that we need in our world? So back to this innkeeper, what if, what if we look at this story differently, at this innkeeper, this character differently, and understand that maybe she or he was giving all they had to offer, the most they had to offer. What if we turn that on its head and reach out our arms open wide to radical hospitality and welcome that maybe that innkeeper was trying their best to extend? Now, I don't know about sending that little drummer boy around there. I don't know if that was the best thing, but... Where are we finding fault where we could be encouraging? Sometimes I just think we need to pause. To pause and take stock about where folks might be coming from. Advent, the word advent means arrival. And the traditional meaning is the arrival, the birth of the Christ child into the world, the embodiment of love. And as you use, we look for a more expansive meaning. We look to be reminded of the four pillars of Advent, hope, peace, joy, and love. We go beyond the manger and invite the possibility that hope and peace and joy and love might be born anew in us with some intention so that we can then together birth these in the world into a world that so desperately needs more hope, more peace, more joy, more love. Our beautiful visual art, thank you to Julie Solaria, symbolizes the end. The opportunity for the light of love to be born in us anew. New opportunities, pregnant with possibility. If we are but willing to pause, open our eyes and our ears with wonder and consider what really is possible. Just as a baby is born and brought forth, we house love and we partner with love to bring the light that is in us so that it can be born anew this time of year. It's a perfect time to live into wonder and possibility. 
we began the service with the words that the pandemic has laid bare and widened economic disparity locally and globally, and asking how can our community, how can our congregation become a house where love can be born anew, offering respite and sustenance and care, opening the doors ever wider to those seeking shelter from the onslaught of life. As we ponder our calling, to make room in the inn. May those lonely and frightened spaces within us be filled with hope, with peace, with joy, with love. There are things we can do. There are things that we already do. Most of us quite comfortable and privileges, privileged I like to think that there are additional things that we need to do, that we must do. Who might we open the door wide to? How might we co-create with love, hospitality anew? You know, we talked so many times over the last year and a half, almost two years now, how the big church, capital C, and we as a congregation have the opportunity to reinvent, to look for renewed purpose. And I know that we might feel some resistance to that, but Karen, we're already doing so much. Karen, we're tired. But Karen, I know. I know. And what if a bit of new purpose gave us new life and new energy? Who are those that we might consider serving? And how do we give great and broader purpose to UUFNN? I've been reflecting lately as I'm here, day after day after day, on two realities. We have a large, beautiful campus that is really underutilized, especially during the week. And we have the incredible resource of lots of folks who are retired in our community. Are you with me so far? That's a teaser. I'm going to invite you for your homework for this next week to reflect. And I challenge you to think with me about this and to dream with me about how we might serve our community in ways that are so needed. In this season of light, I had an experience several times in recent weeks, walking in the education meeting from a meeting with someone in the Star King room. And as we walked together in those dark hallways, I would say, take just a couple more steps and the light will come on. Because Dennis, in his infinite wisdom, Dennis, our handyman, sexton, fixer of facility problems, maintenance person extraordinaire, giver of all gifts in buildings. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis, in his infinite wisdom, put a second motion light in the hallway so that when you walk through, it will come on and light the, light the way, and you don't have to go around that corner stumbling and fumbling for the light switch. How many of us have done that many times over the years?
But you have to take that first step or two in darkness, and then the way is illuminated. You with me? You got to take those first steps. And as I heard myself say that, just take one or two more steps and the light will come on. It's where we might be. From this morning's reading that Dave read to us, perhaps in this Advent waiting time, we can learn to let go and slow down, despite all the pressures to hurry and speed up and do more and be more, maybe we can take some moments to intentionally slow down and open up. Perhaps we can begin to clear away some of the clutter and open up a space within us for silence, for stillness, for hope, for the holy, Maybe even to ponder what we might see when that light comes on. What's going to be there waiting for us? And maybe, just maybe, we create this open space and then we find a little more room in our lives for generosity, for laughter, for connection, for that radical, warm welcome, for caring, for love, and for life. May it be so this Advent season. Blessed be. In these moments of our time of community prayer and meditation, may we open the doors of our hearts to honesty about we've, what we've done and left undone that created less hope in a hurting world. Let's take a moment and breathe out any regret that we have and just let it go and breathe in life-giving and forgiving love and out again with peace in these moments we open the doors of our lives anew to the call of spirit inviting us to become more than we can ask or imagine let us breathe out our fear. Just breathe it out. That we may breathe in the courage of spirit. Spirit moves in strange ways sometimes. that we might breathe out again with peace. In these moments, we seek to open wide the doors, filling this place with compassion for all who are struggling. 
Today I want to mention by name Bob Gaw and his family and their loss of Jane. Mike Trainer and Karen Trainer and their family. Cindy Fogel, surgery tomorrow. Jamie Woodham and Dinah Woodham, James Woodham of Alabama. Maggie Fleming of Truckee. We send out our love to all of these, all who need our strength, our healing, our presence to be shared. We send out our love to those who are suffering economic hardship, insecurity in basic needs. May abundance be shared those who are suffering mentally and finding it difficult to cope. May paths open and hope be present. Those suffering illness or injury, may healing abound. Those suffering loneliness and isolation, may companionship and solace arrive often through us. those who are suffering discrimination and fear and violence, may they know the presence of respect, respite, and safety. May the advent of compassion be born anew in us, reside with us, move outward from us to meet the needs of the world, making a home anew for the holy that is each and every one of us and all of us together. Our gesture that has come to mean I see you, I am connected to you, we are all in this together, we are one. And we take a few moments now for those on Zoom to record their prayers and meditations in the chat, or we continue a few moments of prayer and meditation in this room. We gather our hopes and our disappointments. We gather our joys and our fears. We gather our celebrations and our sorrows. And we hold them together as one. Because we are one in the heart of love. Amen.
My friends, I am Will Bowen through my 11 years here at the fellowship. I've had the uh, privilege of serving on the Legacy Fund uh, twice. Uh, and last Sunday uh, was devoted to the Legacy Fund here for those of you who were able to see the service and be part of the service. Those who missed it, uh, and it is available on YouTube, by the way. Uh, Midori Ishibashi Wall and Philip Moore did a beautiful job of highlighting two of the larger uh, fund items that have been sourced through Legacy Fund. You have the details on those. There were many others through the years. Um, the Legacy Fund is first and foremost a commitment to the future of this community. Second, it funds annual grants that advance and, and enhance the fellowship every day. And finally, your gift is invested in corporations and organizations doing good. Think green, that's part of it there. Uh, so in this season of giving, I encourage you to invest in our legacy fund, provide for the future needs and the values of our fellowship. Individual gifts, as well as donations provided in your will are all appreciated, both large and small. Funds should be marked to ensure they are deposited to the legacy fund of the fellowship. Thank you. Thank you, Will. I want to thank you so much for joining us for today's service. Um, we have so many holiday offerings coming up, and um, next week will be part two of the end. You have to come to hear the rest of the story next week, so we'll continue. Um, adorning our altar table as the services unfold next week and on Christmas Eve. And um, I want to make sure that you know about Friday, uh, 6 p.m., our Solstice Teze service. We get to be in person for that service in this room and online as well. And that's our service that's a quiet moment of respite where we sing short chants over and over so that they become a really deep meditation. It's by candlelight, it's beautiful. Please join us for that either here in this room or online, you won't regret it. And then on December 24th, Christmas Eve at 5 p.m., we'll be here in this room for our Christmas Eve service and on Zoom as well. So please be present in community for those particularly special this year services. Our offering, um, as was expressed, you can give in a number of ways by texting. Our Share the Plate partner is the Women and Children's Center of the Sierra. If you're in person, you can leave a physical offering in the receptacle here at the front or the basket at the back. And thank you so much for your generosity. And after today's service, you can stay on for our holiday party if you're on Zoom, or you can uh, stay in this room for our in-person holiday party, which is our winter festival. If you're in person, there's tables in the back for decorating your gifts for the Ribbon of Joy. You'll find all the supplies that you need there. Sue will be there to help with any details about um, delivering the gifts after the party. We might need some help with that. And if you're online, you're invited to 
a breakout room where you can wrap your gifts together or there will be a breakout room where you can do a craft and you can request which breakout room to go to. Um, and I think in just a little bit, you'll be reminded again of that if you're online with us this morning. So we'll all be connected. It will be messy and chaotic and wonderful online and in this room together. Um, it'll be a thing. So really invite you to um, take advantage of that joyful opportunity. Um, children and youth, you're invited to open the kits that you received and participate in making snowflakes if you're online to decorate your home. And if you're in person, that will happen at the back of the room. So, Uh, this is always a such a moving experience every year, but uh, today and tomorrow, Wax families will receive 80-something gifts from you that you are providing for them, as, long, as well as copious laundry baskets filled with household goods. And I just, I just want to thank you for your, your generosity in providing that. Um, again and again in this year, and it's, it's what a delight it is to help deliver those gifts to WAX, so thank you. So please do stay here in this room. You're invited and welcome masks on and distance for our Winter Festival holiday party. Um, those on, on Zoom stay on with us as well. And you're invited to participate and relish our closing song.
beloveds, I'm going to invite you to rise in body and spirit as you are able, and we form our customary connection that we were doing on Zoom. Another reminder of the mystery of connection and community. Beloveds, in this Advent season, may you take a few moments to pause and reflect and be still so that we all may have an experience of love and peace and joy and hope being born anew, mystery of mystery, miracle of miracles in us this holiday season. May it be so, may you be blessed, may you know that you are loved beyond measure and beyond imagination. Blessed be, amen, and namaste.